Earwig and the Witch, the latest offering from the legendary Studio Ghibli. I'm excited to do a video on this film because there is a lot of criticism surrounding the film and there has been skepticism from pretty much the outset of the announcement of this film being made. But after reading some of the mainstream criticisms of this film, I'm not so sure that I agree, which is why I'm making this video today. Studio Ghibli is a giant in the animated hand-drawn film space, which is why when this film was announced to be their first foray into the CG space, there was some excitement but also a lot of skepticism. It's a new animation style by a studio that doesn't really have a lot of experience in it, but you would think with all the past successes of Studio Ghibli they would be able to handle this with a good amount of grace. Now was that exactly the case? That's where there's a lot of debate going on right now. The film is directed by Goro Miyazaki, the son of the legendary Hayao Miyazaki, who is responsible for a large number of Studio Ghibli's most successful films. So when you have a dad like that, that's a lot to live up to. Goro Miyazaki was responsible for films like From Up on Poppy Hill and Tales from Earthsea. From Up on Poppy Hill received significant praise, where Tales from Earthsea, which was an adaptation of an Ursula K. Le Guin novel, did it really do so well? There are a lot of strong criticisms for that film, and I would agree with them. So you don't really know exactly what you're going to expect from Goro Miyazaki yet. I don't know that he's reached the level where you can just trust everything he puts out. Which is why I think that the skepticism for Earwig and the Witch is somewhat grounded in reality. There is a debate to be had about the quality of his work from a narrative standpoint. The previous films he's worked on had gorgeous visuals, I will say that. Tales from Earthsea was a beautiful film, and for me, the stunning visuals almost covered over some of the narrative problems that it had. So, Earwig and the Witch. Animation, good or bad? I'm just gonna say it, I don't think that it was that bad. In fact, I don't even know that that bad is the terminology that I should be using, because I actually kind of liked it. I've seen people claim that the animation is not good from a professional standpoint, in that the characters don't look as alive as they should, or the glossy animation just doesn't look great, but I feel like Studio Ghibli dipping their toes into the CG animation space, a lot of people seem to have expected them to head straight to the Pixar Disney level of animation and style of animation. It's easy to assume that that would be the case because this animation does mirror that of some of the more realistic CG animations that big studios are doing these days. But to me it didn't look like that was exactly what they were going for. It looked like they were doing something a little bit different and I think that's the problem of Earwig and the Witch as a whole. It's a movie that looks like it's trying to do something that's been done before but not doing it that well. Whereas I tend to think that it was trying to carve something of its own out of a space that already existed. But if you're just comparing it to other successful films within the genre by different studios then it doesn't look just like that. It doesn't line up just like that. Studio Ghibli doesn't do things like everyone else. But am I giving them too much credit? There is a somewhat lack of a cohesive plot throughout the movie. It is relatively uneventful and contained to one house and just a few characters for the majority of the film. But having experienced other Studio Ghibli films that do similar things, that didn't really bother me. Studio Ghibli is known to take stories that focus in on singular characters and small instances in their life life in somewhat anticlimactic ways sometimes. Before we go any further, I just want to say that I will not be spoiling any major plot elements for this film going forward. Now the film does end in a place where some critics have claimed that it honestly felt like the end of the second act, like the movie was just getting started and moving towards something. And that would be a valid criticism. The movie ends on a stranger note. It's somewhat anticlimactic and could feel half-baked. From a studio I didn't trust, I might would be more critical of this element. But with Studio Ghibli, I've learned to look a little bit closer, and maybe that's my own fault. Critics have claimed that the main character of this film is a pretty unlikable protagonist, but I didn't feel like that was the case. Yes, the protagonist is a bit of a brat. There are questionable morals to most of the characters within the film, but I actually thought that the studio brought the character to life in a unique way. The character is kind of devilish looking. She's out to get everyone to just do what she says, and she never really faces any consequences for manipulating the people around her in this way. It seems like the whole point of the movie is for Eric to get to a place where everyone just does what she wants them to, which is a mission that she states in the film itself. 
However, this film is meant to be fun. It's one of the shorter Studio Ghibli films coming in at only, I think, 120 minutes. There's a lot packed into this film, but I don't know that a lot of critics' problems with the film are really as major problems as they're perceived to be. I feel like these problems come about when trying to compare this film to the other films in the competing space. And I don't really like to compare Studio Ghibli to other studios. The film is contained to a plot about a young girl who lives in an orphanage, doesn't want to leave the orphanage because she's learned to control pretty much everyone at the orphanage and she likes her life there, but she gets scooped up out of the orphanage by a witch who lives with a mandrake with a really bad temper who writes novels and plays music. And quite frankly, it's awesome. But I think where this movie has some people perplexed is that the plot seems very generic, but if you look closer, it's got a lot of quirks to it. And the quirky elements of this film are where it thrived for me. I found the ride to be enjoyable all the way through, even with the anticlimactic ending and with some of the questions left unanswered and somewhat unsatisfying plot arc. Most critics are saying that there were no stakes in this film and no goals. And when it comes to opinions like this, to each their own. But are we applying the wrong standard to the film? The film is based on a middle grade novel by Diana Wynne Jones. It was not a book geared towards teens or adults. And after scavenging the internet for the criticisms that were heaved onto the book itself when it came out, I find that all the narrative critiques that Studio Ghibli is getting for the film are the exact same critiques that were heaped onto the book itself when it came out. That being said, the original book was enjoyed by many. So is there validity to these criticisms? There's validity to all criticism, but how much of those narrative criticisms can be heaped onto Studio Ghibli? And if so, is the problem really that Studio Ghibli simply adapted a novel too closely to the source material? At what point should Studio Ghibli be responsible for needing to change main plot elements of the original work? And would viewers be happy if the original work was tainted in that way? Movies get away with doing this in small ways all the time, but it's often not received that well. So did Goro Miyazaki know that this book had some problems going into it? Or was it his choice to let the book's message stand on its own? You can debate the quality of execution all day long. But the struggle of criticizing art that doesn't follow standard norms is a hard one. When is it okay to deviate from norms? What exactly is the point of this film? What message did Miyazaki want to present? I did not have any major problems with the animation on this film. I actually found it endearing, and I actually found a lot of the characters to be rather lively. I know when some screenshots and concept art images came out for this film before it was ever anywhere near releasing, there was a lot of skepticism because it was just strange to see Studio Ghibli moving into this space. But luckily, I don't think that they're moving into this space permanently or shifting all of their films from hand-drawn animation to CG animation. I think this is something that they are learning how to do and will improve at. But I think that this first stab was actually fairly strong. I don't think it was as weak as critics are saying. This movie was offbeat, plain and simple but it was wrapped in a guise of being a Studio Ghibli film. It had a black cat, it had witches and spells, and all sorts of fantasy elements that you expect from a Studio Ghibli film, but a lot of more mainstream plot points of kid lives in orphanage, gets taken away from the orphanage by someone that they dislike, etc, 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 etc. So I think there's a conflict of expectations when it comes to viewing this film. But to me, the film was fantastical. And that's what I love in a Studio Ghibli film. That's what I look for. I don't view the film as empty, but rather mysterious. And I like that. But who knows, maybe I'm giving Goro Miyazaki too much slack. Has he really proved himself yet to be above criticism? Am I treating him that way? You guys tell me. Living in the shadow of a legacy like Hayao Miyazaki has got to be incredibly hard. But do you guys think that Goro is doing something to differentiate himself from his father? And if so, do you think he should be? Or do we all just really want deep down more Hayao Miyazaki films for the rest of forever released by Studio Ghibli? I'd like both. Anyway, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this breakdown of Earwig and the Witch by Studio Ghibli, directed by Goro Miyazaki. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel for future content like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.